What's going on, people? Welcome back to Curtis Shaw TV, back with another live stream and happy Monday, people. That that picture, loads of you sent me that picture, so big up. I had to put that up, man. You know, Martin Odegaard taking the picture of West Ham fans leaving the ground, going to Stratford Shopping Centre, man. It was crazy. Um, but yeah, man, what a weekend for Arsenal. Clipped up West Ham. We, we owed them a beating as well. After what they've done, you know, in the last year or so, they, they beat us in the Carabao Cup. They beat us in the league. So we definitely owed them a heavy victory. And um, on the um, on the radio this morning, heard a lot of people saying um, that, you know, David Moyes should get sacked. So they're really not happy with that result that happened to them. But hey, it is what it is, people. Happy Monday. Uh, green screen. Just sold your star to Mikel Arteta. Hey, they were fuming, man. They are absolutely fuming. £105 million bargain. And uh, hey, what a performance from Declan Rice yesterday, man, against um, his former club. Emotional game for him. Um, and, you know, a great performance. We'll obviously get into it in player ratings. I had some West Ham fans absolutely nibbling um, in the comments on Twitter with a few of the jokes that I ran, but, you know, you know what it is. And also a couple of Arsenal fans were, were nibbling as well. You know me, full-time, I drop grenades on Twitter and just leave them to marinate, you know? So um, when I said... Um, Mikel Arteta, I've always rated him. You don't deserve him. <laughs> You've called him out. I said, listen, that was yesterday, not today, my friend. So anyway, what a great performance from Arsenal. What a victory. Um, it's crazy because obviously before the game, if you offered any Arsenal fan 6-0, you would have been jumping for joy. During the game, I'm actually thinking this can end up 7 or 8 or 9. But do you know what? I was delighted that we didn't just stop at half-time at 4-0, we scored another couple, we missed a couple chances, and we didn't concede. I think the clean sheet was extremely crazy as well. Um, you know, just to show that our concentration levels were so high. So, yeah, man, it was, uh, it was a great victory. I, for me, that was probably Arteta's... That was possibly his best performance as manager. I know beating Man City was great, um, but City still dominated a lot of the game, and... Yeah, it, it, arguably that was that was Arteta's best game as manager. And I think we've threatened to do that this season a lot. How many times have you watched Arsenal and gone, oh, we should be 3-0 up, 4-0 up, and instead it's 0-0. At half-time, we actually were 4-0 up, and the game was over. So that was, that was an outstanding performance from Arsenal. The whole club deserves a lot of credit um, for that performance. Arteta, the players... And, and the fans who were there and the fans who weren't there. So, yeah, man, what, what a start to the week. And uh, we've got to keep building on it. You know, we got Burnley this Saturday. Don't want to look ahead and, and, and write off anybody in the league, but I'm expecting Arsenal to go to Burnley on Saturday and clip them up as well. Vincent Company, he needs a clip around the ear hole as well. This is the manager that told us to sign... Um, Sambi Laconga is the new Yaya Torre. So we owe them, you know, a little cheeky 5 6 nil as well. So, yeah, it's looking good. We've just got to keep building, stay in this title race. Seven players were out yesterday as well for Arsenal. And these aren't little run-of-the-mill players, you know. No Jesus, no Zinchenko, no Thomas Partey, no Timber. You know, Smith Rowe out as well. There's key players there that, that can influence the team. No Tommy Asu, no Fabio Vieira. So imagine if four or five of those players were available as well, the level that we could be at. So listen, enjoy it. And, you know, for the next six days until the next game, but they have to keep winning. As I said, I want to see Arsenal win five, six, seven games in a row if we're going to show everyone that we're serious. So yeah, great performance. Couldn't have gone better. Um, in terms of Arsenal. Let me read out these super chats. Ronaldo Bailey said, big up C unit, first super chat. Might have to reload that intro for the big win yesterday. I mean, I don't like to disrupt the flow of the show, but run that blood club. <laughs> All right, first goal, first goal. We can't do any more, but big up yourself. Ronaldo, by the way, we could do with a Ronaldo at Arsenal, R9. Big up to you, bro. Big up Sam Bond. He said, big up the community. Was undercover yesterday. So bad at half time that I could have used the seats next to me as a flatbed. Trossard, Rice, Saliba and Gabriel. That's the core of our team. 
pure ballers. Come on, you gunners. I mean, listen, we're going to go through it in player ratings. Big up to you, Sam. Um, it was one of them, wasn't it? People were messaging me saying, I'm at work, but I'm having to tune in because I can't believe we're winning um, by that many. It's it's legit. It's proper. Big up yourself. Pep Teta said, new profile pick. Hey, the Trossard um, binoculars, man. It's a goated celebration. You know, it's goated. I, I go crazy whenever he does it. I love a celebration. I feel like celebrations are going out of football a little bit. Everyone kind of does the same thing. So when someone does something a little different, man, Trossard, by the way, certified baller, certified footballer, man. I, I'm, I'm convinced he's one of the most talented players at the club and intelligent players as well. And I've been saying for a long time, we've got to get him in the team, but where do you play him? Is he a better left winger than Martinelli? Is he a better striker than Jesus? I hate to say it, and I don't want to come across as disrespectful, but we might be a better team with Trossard playing up front than Jesus because he seems to offer goal threat, and Jesus doesn't offer that enough at times. So this could be the front three for me, Saka, Trossard, and, and Martinelli moving forward. That's not writing off Gabriel Jesus. He's still got a role to play. Um, but I think I think Trossard has found his place in this team. I think he plays through the middle. Um, let's see. SG hit the intro. Ah, right, we hit it once. We may, we maybe we get it on again a little bit later as well. Big up SG. Uh, Rigo said uh, they thought they were catching W's yesterday, bro. I mean, I'm forever blowing bubbles. I mean, they floated out that stadium like the bubbles. To be honest, at half time, I thought they were hardcore hooligans, Green Street, and all that. Um, you know, they were in Stratford um, shopping centre by half time. So, hey, they got clipped, man. They got really clipped. Um, Newton's Gaming. Peeps, have a great Monday. Curtis, love that you're shameless. Everyone stay healthy. Bless. We just, I embrace it. I just embrace it. Oh, one minute you wanted Arteta out. Now you're saying, um, I've always rated him. You know how it goes. That's football, people. One week, you don't rate them. The next week, you do. It's football. Enjoy it. Embrace it. Big up, Mr. Cool Bus Driver, man. Hope you're well, bro. He said, big up, Triple C. Curtis Cruz in the community. Short hair up, getting ready for my flight to London. Great win, but we're still for a hey, big up, man. Give me a shout as well. And you're right. You are, you are actually spot on with that, you know, is that... Um, in the words of Josh Cronke, uh, be excited, but also we do have to be humble. We're not top of the league. There's two teams above us at the moment. Obviously, we're level with Man City on points, so there's still work to do. All we're doing is mixing the cement at the moment, you know, and putting the foundations in place. We've got to build the house. To build the house, we've got to win the league. So I, I totally agree with you on that. Um, Unknown C, big up to you, new member. I have to say, by the time the stream finished yesterday and I checked all the analytics, 120 new members um, joined the community yesterday. You know, so it just shows. You know when people say things like, oh, you want Arsenal to lose so you get more views, bro? You know what I mean? There ain't better streams than when we beat Team 6-0 and get great views and it's great vibes and people want to join. And so, listen, we want Arsenal to win all the time. Book of Eli said, uh, this is how we performed last year with Trossard. Yeah, he definitely improved us when he came in the team. And uh, Keem said, I don't know if it's just the gas of the 6-0 win, but that high-vis kit is growing on me. Oh, <laughs> yo, and you say I'm shameless. Oh, dear. I said I won't go anywhere near that kit unless I see a major trophy lifted. If we win the league or win the Champions League, the second that full-time whistle goes... That, that the whole kit can get ordered, including the socks. Um, but until then, I can't go near it. But I have to admit, the victories make it look a little bit better. Maybe the opposition are confused by all the lines on it. Um, and Simon said, Trossard is a better link-up player than Martinelli and Jesus. The key to him is how he brings the other players around him into the game. It's, it's strange, isn't it? Because he plays false nine, but every time Trossard plays up front, I still feel like he's, he might score during the game. When Jesus starts doing that false nine thing, I don't feel like he's going to score. It's like he's too far away from the goal to even get close to scoring. So I don't want to sound disrespectful on Jesus because he's still a player that I rate highly, but I think Trossard 
is the answer at the moment. That is for sure. There's no doubt. He's an absolute baller. I felt that was a master clash yesterday. And uh, Comrade said, yesterday became M.R.'s turn red by the end. Bro, they didn't know what was hitting them at West Ham. It was crazy. Anyway, let's get into today's show. Big up to everyone. Any other super chats, I'll wait until a little bit later on in the show. Appreciate everyone tuned in. Make sure you hit the like. We got, I think we got close to 4,000 likes yesterday. That watch along is still getting views as well. Big up Kabira always puts in the um, the timestamps in the comments and uh, big up on that. Make sure you follow the TikTok as well, Curtis Shaw TV, all the reaction videos on their crazy celebrations. Um, as you can imagine, people. So uh, listen, I think every Arsenal fan is in the same mood on this Monday morning. A uh, couple of things to get into before we get into player ratings. Just a bit of a roundup on the weekend and, and the whole situation. AFCON final last night, Super Bowl as well. Um, but of course, AFCON final. And uh, listen, I've said some things. I've said I'm not going to fully commit to this opinion because I don't know the full extent of this guy's ability. But once again, Osserman does not convince me with the performance. Listen, I don't know. Maybe Nigeria don't create enough for him. I don't know, but I watched Ivan Tony against Wolves, third goal in four games. I watch Osimen in AFCON. I've watched him a number of times for Napoli as well. I just don't know if this guy is the answer. And as I said, I'm shameless. If Osimen comes to Arsenal, I'm celebrating. I'm, I'm playing Burner Boy on full blast. I'm embracing the signing, and I'm telling you he's going to be world class. But something about this guy just does not convince me. £110 million, pounds, you're going to have to give him free 400 grand a week. I don't know. I think there's a whole leap of Serie A tax attached to him. You know, I've seen man like um, Tammy Abraham score 20 goals in Serie A. And he's nothing but an overstretched Eddie and Ketty. So for me, I don't know. I don't know. Listen, a lot of you say that he's the answer, that he'll score loads of goals. Maybe in a team that creates more chances, in a better team, maybe you get a better goal record out of him. So I don't want to fully write him off. I know he scored goals in the Champions League and in Syria. And like you said, that's a good point. You know, Isak had a pretty average goal record as well before he came to the Prem. Now a lot of people rate him. So I may be doing him a disservice. I just don't see a £110 million striker there when I watch him. But if we sign him, I'll shamelessly celebrate it. Um, but very interesting again. And uh, Ivory Coast, Nico Pepe winning AFCON, although he was a sub, um, an unused substitute in the game, which he didn't look too happy about. But listen, well done to, to Ivory Coast. I did say on Friday, I felt Ivory Coast with that home crowd would win that game. Um, I was disappointed with how poor... Um, Nigeria played to be honest, but yeah, it was a uh, it was a good game. I was switching over; it was a real sporting night. I was watching the Heat against Cel Celtics on one channel, then Afcon, bit of a Super Bowl, and uh, yeah, it was a great sporting day um, all round. So yeah, the striker situation and conversation continues. But uh, listen, I, I think again. And I always say this: I'll give Arteta his flowers when they're due, and he'll get some flowers today in the player ratings. But um, I mean, O'Leary saying mad disrespect to Osman. I don't even think I'm being mad disrespectful. I'm not writing the guy off. I'm not saying he's a bad player. I'm saying when I've watched him, I don't see the superstar. I see a guy that works hard, that chips in with goals, got a good goal record. Uh, but maybe it's the environment. Maybe he plays for a better team like Arsenal, who create a lot of chances and he's better. Yeah, Usher and Alicia Keys. I mean, a lot of people online saying that was the best part of the whole Super Bowl, but I don't want to be disrespectful to um, to Super Bowl fans, that is for sure, to American football fans. But yeah, the Usher halftime performance looked like the most exciting part of it. Um, but yeah, the striker conversation continues. And listen, I said in January, I would rather Arteta doesn't sign anybody than signs, you know, a, a, a meaty signing. Don't go and sign a Denis Suarez level player or a, a, a Kim Kalstrom or a Danny Ceballos. Leave it alone. Wait till the summer and buy who you truly want. My thing is this. If Arteta wants Osserman and he believes he can turn him into a superstar, go and get him, right? Go and get him. 
Yeah, Usher was, uh, he was, you know, he might have Swiss beats on the phone to him today saying, yo, what are you doing? But hey, yeah, with Arteta, if you want Osser, men, get him and get the best out of him as a player. If you want Tony, get him. People saying Sesco or whoever else it could be, then, uh, you know, go and go and get them in. But I, I do think we still need a striker, but let's hope, obviously, Trossard, Jesus and the wingers can, can get us to the summer. Hopefully we lift the title. Um, anyway. Let's get into it. Let's get into it and uh, let's talk about yesterday's game because what a treat that was. I was going absolutely crazy. Um, the highlights actually are on my TikTok account, so go and check that out with my reaction and the goal go, um, underneath on the split screen. Curtis Shaw TV on TikTok. 6-0 um, scenes absolutely going crazy. Um, I wasn't sure about this performance pre-match when I saw the team. Obviously, Jorginho was dropped. Or oh, not dropped. He wasn't dropped. That's the wrong word. He was rested because the manager said that, you know, he'd struggled to recover from the game against Liverpool. 32 years of age, you know, chasing after that Liverpool midfield. He was knackered. So he brought um, Havertz back into midfield, put Trossard up front. It was probably a blessing in disguise because... It got Trossard back into the starting eleven, And then now we've seen the fact that he is, you know, he's probably the answer up front. With Havertz in midfield, I'm still not convinced by it. You know, big up Solomon as well. Big him up. He's been doing some good editing for me. So I appreciate that. Um, so, yeah, it was probably a blessing in disguise is what I will say because it got Trossard into the team. Right. Player ratings, pen and paper settings. Uh, big up Jurassic Jai, who's handed out five Curtis Shaw TV memberships. Big up yourself, bro. That's, you know, 125 members now since yesterday at kickoff have joined. So big up to you and big up to the five new members. Really appreciate it. Uh, Sports Genius said, Big C, that halftime show brought me back to the 2000s. Usher brought out Alicia Keys, got me singing the notes. Some people want it all. Yo, it's crazy, man. They don't make R&B like they used to. I don't know what they're dealing with anymore. They, there's no emotion in the music. You know what I mean? It's different. Um, Guy who said, Awesome and he's also injury prone. Yeah. You know, I don't know. If we get him, let's go with it. But I don't know. And Alex said, with what I saw in AFCON, I do not think Victor is going to be a good buy for Arsenal. No individual skill. He could flop big time. I mean, listen, if they want him, shamelessly, I'll run with it. But for the price, is he double the quality of Ivan Tony? Because he could cost double the amount. So we'll see. Anyway, I've got some player ratings um, scribbled down here. But, I, you know... I'm in a great mood, so I'm open to, to be swayed. But they're high ratings. They're very high ratings for nearly all the players, that is for sure. 71% um, possession, 25 shots, uh, 12 on target. West Ham, one shot on target and four off target. Five shots in the game altogether. I would, I'm just going to read out a tweet that I put out. This one got West Ham fans particularly annoyed. Um, but you know me, I, I'm, I'm, I'm here for the banter, information and entertainment. That's what we're here for. I put high Sky Sports. Um, I wanted to watch West Ham versus Arsenal, but instead you're showing an Arsenal training session. Can you please advise? Uh, West Ham fans were absolutely, uh, you know, foaming at the mouth about that one. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. Shameless settings. It was basically Arsenal against... Um, against 11 cones, to be honest. So, yeah, the cone man really did show what he was about. But as you can imagine, West Ham fans didn't really see the sense of humour with that. So, uh, yeah. But, you know, we're here for it, people. Um, it was... Uh, it was it felt necessary, and it, it definitely worked. Um, but anyway, <laughs> let's get into player ratings. And uh, we'll go through it, people. 6 nil. You know the drill, read out the name, give me your opinion. If you disagree, put your rating in and, and we'll run with it. Uh, David Rayo, I've given seven and a half. Now, on one hand, he only had one shot on target. So ultimately, it's not like he had a lot of saves to make. But somebody put it in the comments yesterday. Sometimes they're the most difficult games because you don't have a lot to do and your concentration levels have to be high. He caught everything. His distribution was excellent. The save he had to make, he made it well. And listen, at the time when we signed him and even moving forward, every game 
I was talking about Ramsdale. And I'm not even the biggest Aaron Ramsdale fan, but we were having conversations about Ramsdale. No disrespect to Rambo, because I do like you as a player. Cool. I'm not talking about Ramsdale no more. People say, yeah, I'm Ramsdale. I'm like, ooh. No, 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 I'm joking. That's disrisrespectful. But um, I, the, the conversation's done. Lock it off. David Reyes, Arsenal's number one. Ramsdale probably leaves in the summer. We buy a second choice goalkeeper. And that's where we're at. David Rea, man, balling. Looks comfy in defence. His distribution is second to none. And that's the reason he's in the team. So, yeah, no disrespect to, to Curried Goat. And Ramsdale, but yeah, um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so 7.5. I could have given him an 8, really, but I'm going to go 7.5. Darren said 7 didn't have much to do. Ammo's giving him an 8. Big up Static in the chat, Aker. It's wow, 6 0. Well done. Elliot gives him an 8. Clean, clean sheet and kept it moving. He's doing well. He's doing well. Ramsdale, Jake, you know what? Great comment. The argument I always used to say that I didn't agree with. People used to say, oh, Arteta's been unfair. He signed De Rea and then dropped Ramsdale. Ramsdale hasn't had a chance to prove himself. I was like, Ramsdale's had two years, bro. Ramsdale should have not put the manager in a situation where he felt he needed to upgrade. You know, he got the new phone, man. Better megapixel. The internet's a bit quicker. Sometimes you need the upgrade, people. You know what I mean? So, yeah, he, he has to look in the mirror, I'm afraid. Um, let's go to the back four. Jakob Kivio. I mean, I've said many times the Kiwi isn't ripe. In fact, we've said at times the Kiwi was rotten. Um, it wasn't bad yesterday. I'm going to give him some flowers uh, for two reasons. Because on one hand, he's not a left back, right? Doesn't suit him. And number two, you're playing against Mohamed Kudus. Now, I look back at the game and I'm like, Kudus didn't do anything. So... I'm going to give him some props. I think the Kiwi was a little bit more ripe yesterday. Um, do I want to see him inverting? Not really, but I'm going to give him 7 out of 10. I think that was a very good performance, really, in the end. Um, so, yeah, let's give him let's give him some props. I'm almost tempted to give him 7.5 just for vibes. That change, he, uh, he pocketed Kudas. I think 7's fair. Um, does he make me completely... Um, at ease, no. You know, it still feels a little bit nerve-wracking. Uh, I wouldn't like him against Salah or against somebody better, so he's definitely not the answer. Uh, he still makes me nervous. But I'm going to give him a 7, which I think is a building block and a positive for him. I've given him ratings a lot lower than that. And you're right, you put a great ball in as well um, to Saka. So, listen, Kuda's been on fire. He did nothing yesterday. So, give him his credit, 7 out of 10. Big him up. Um, at right back, Ben White, Benny Blanco, Benjamin Tan. As I said, he's been a different player since Dubai. I think he was slightly better than Kivior. Didn't really get tested at right back. I would give Ben White 7.5. I thought he did well. Got forward a little bit more than than Kivior. Uh, I'm, do I give him an 8? I'm going to give him an 8. I'm going to give him an 8, in fact. I thought he did. He put some really good crosses in. So I'm actually going to give Benny Blanco an 8, actually. I think 7.5. We'll, we'll, we'll itch him up to an 8. I'm just thinking of some of the crosses he put in. I mean, E. Ross says, no disrespect, but Kivior is garbage. <laughs> hey, hey, listen, English tax Ross, he don't mess about, man. Ben inverting, exactly. 8 out of 10 for Benny Blanco, man. I thought um, that suntan tax definitely working on him. 8 out of 10. Two centre-backs. I mean, listen. These two, these two are just, we talk about them every week, right? But they're just unbelievable. They're just, they're just ridiculous how good these two are. When you consider their age, they've got time to develop. I just think these two are just outrageously good. Um, I'm giving them 9.5 each. I should give them 10, but I'm only not giving them... Do I just give them 10 anyway? I'm giving them 9.5. Nah, do you know what? I'm giving them 10. I'm giving them 10. They both scored. They both kept a clean sheet. What more do I want? What What do you want? Do you want to drive the, the Rolls-Royce Phantom or do you want the Lamborghini Euros? 10 out of 10. I, I've got to. I've got to. You're a centre-back. You kept a clean sheet. You're different class on the ball. You scored. You did knee-slide celebrations. I'm done. 10 out of 10. Hang it in the Louvre. 
Hang it in the Louvre. 10 out of 10. Pure vibes. We just beat West Ham 6-0. Six, six I've got a green screen saying you sold your star to Mikel Artel. 10 out of 10. Brick wall settings. Veneers. Hair lines. Catchy songs. What more do you want from the two centre-backs? 10 out of 10. I'm not messing around. Credit to Edu. We found Gabby. Well, he had to find one decent Brazilian. So let me give him some credit. Big him up. Sporting Director of the Year. They're incredible. They're absolutely incredible. Because that's all he does a rock. You just can't stop me now. Brick wall settings. You don't want to play against them two. 10 out of 10. Lock down everything. HD cut shape up for Gabriel. Saliba faultless. Taper fades all over the place, like E. Ross says. 10 out of 10. Let's move on. My man of the match for yesterday. I want to know your guys' opinion. Declan Rice. They're calling him Beckham Rice online because of the whips. Beckham Rice, people, is the name we've been calling him. Beckham Rice. Are you seeing the whips? Uh, they they're booing him. He won you your for your first European trophy. You got 105 million for him out of your youth team, and you're booing him. So man said, "Listen, I gotta go full screen. I'm vex." Man said, "Listen, what, what shoulder is it? This shoulder. Look at him. You sold your star to Mikel Arteta, Beckham Rice." Man said, "Listen, you man, I'm sorry, yeah, but hold that." People think when you do that, you're not celebrating. You are celebrating. You've just muted the TV, really. You've put it on mute, but you're still celebrating. Man said, listen, West Ham, I'm forever blowing bubbles. Pretty bubbles in the air. They fly so high. He said, listen, sorry, but you, man, hold that top corner. Relax yourself. Clipped. You, man, want to boo him. You lot are going to have to leave at half time. I thought the fire alarm went off. There was that many West Ham fans leaving. I said, what's happened? Is, is the stadium burning down? Why are they all leaving? Top bins. Two assists. Beckham Rice. 11. Push it up. Push it 11. The emotion in that game for him, the fact the fans are booing him, you're up against a physical midfield, you get two assists and you bend one in the top corner. And they're booing you. 11 out of 10. Premier League signing of the season. Lock it off. There's been no better signing in the Premier League this season than Declan Rice. I'm going to hold my hands up. He is even better than I thought he was. I knew he was a good player. I knew he was a good player. You know, it's like the rice on your dinner plate, isn't it? It makes up the plate, you know. But it ain't the exciting part of the dinner, is it? It's the jerk chicken, you know. It's the, it's the steak, the gold steak. But this guy is even better than I thought he was. I, I, Zach, I'll be honest, he's world class. And I don't hand that tag out easy. I really don't. I'm very harsh with the world class tag because I'm old school and I'm still trapped in the, the legendary status of Zidane and R9 and Ronaldinho. So world class, I don't hand that out easy. But I'm telling you now, he is world class. I don't believe there's a better DM in the world at winning the ball back than, than Beckham Rice. That's what we're calling him from now on. Beckham Rice. I, like I said, I thought this was just plain rice. Not a lot of flavour. Just does the job. This is rice pudding with jam in the middle. You know, when you're a kid, it's an elite dessert. World class. I can't, there ain't many better DMs than him right now. Maybe Rodri after that, you're struggling. So 11 out of 10, world class. I'm giving it him, I don't care. Fully seasoned and cooked and ready to go. Right, let me go back. Let me come off full screen. I was hyped. I'm sorry, people. Beckham Rice. Um, Kai Havertz. Now, again, I think he did all right, you know. Somebody just said in the comments here, Champions League or Prem. I want the Champions League. You put a star above the Arsenal badge, it's mission complete. Honestly, this ain't even an emotional Monday like you've gone over the top saying Rice is world class. I genuinely think he's world class. I think he starts in most teams in world football if you want a DM. 
to play that role. He's outstanding. Havertz is a tricky one, people. Like part of me, I like I rewatched the game, and I'm like, he's not having a bad game, so I can't like I'm not gonna downrate him and give him something. You know, he said he's a donkey as his nickname, but. You know, you're attacking midfielder. We scored six goals. Havertz doesn't score. Havertz, Havertz doesn't get an assist, but he played all right. Like, I don't want to be horrible here because I, I honestly have no agenda against this guy. He didn't have a bad game. He didn't. I'll be honest, right? I wrote down 6.5, right? But he did some good things. Do you know what? It's a great Monday. Do I give him do I give him more than that? Listen, I have to be real with myself. Like he played all right. There were some nice little touches, couple of nice passes. His link up play was good. Somebody saying he was average, give him a six, five point five, six point five, seven for the donkey, an easy seven. All right, it's Monday, it's good vibes. I'm gonna itch the six point five up to a seven because we won six nil and uh, yeah, okay. I'll I'll scrape him a seven. I gave Kivior a seven, so let me give let me give Donkey Kong a seven as well. You know, it was a great game growing up. Nintendo 64. If you had Donkey, what was it? Diddy Kong Racing. I always remember that was that was truly the best Christmas as a child that I ever had was Nintendo 64. I think it was FIFA Road to World Cup. Diddy Com Racing and Goldeneye. I don't think I've ever been in a, 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 a higher, you know, level of gaming enjoyment than that. So, you know, Donkey Kong settings, Donkey Kai, we'll give him 7 out of 10. Listen, PS2 was the goated one, San Andreas and that. But N64, Goldeneye with the golden gun, oh my god, I was gone. out. That was me, you couldn't get me out of the bedroom. But hey, um, I'll give him a 7, I'll give him a 7. Normal. I mean, Kev, I see what Kev means now. He's play This is normal for Neil from the Inbetweeners. Donkey Kai gets a seven. Uh, I was at six and a half, but the community have leaned on me. So big up Lee Burnell said big up big CC unit business. Rude boy. Bless. Big up to you, Lee. Hope you're well. Um, let's go into the front three. Yeah, there was a FIFA. Sorry to go off topic, but you know this happens sometimes on here. There was a FIFA back in the day where you could play indoors. There was an indoor mode on it. I used to love that one. I don't know which FIFA that was. I think it was one of the World Cup ones as well. Maybe early 2000s. But boy, yo, them games there. I'll be honest. I'm going way off topic here. I had... Oh, yeah, I haven't I haven't forgotten Odegaard. I'm going back to him, don't worry. I had a... Was it the PS2? I had a PS2 and it was chipped. I had a chipped PS2 which meant you could obviously get the copied games. Don't come for me now, people. Uh, allegedly, allegedly, if anyone's watching. not I'm not confirming or denying. Uh, but I may have had a chipped PS2, possibly. I'm not confirming it. So I used to go to this shop. I used to have copied games and uh, two two pound fifty each. So I used to have all the new games when they came out. I remember um, Scarface. That was a banging game. Um, NBA, what was the best NBA game, man? There was the NBA game where you could go into the red and you couldn't, like, miss the next shot. Um, and then you had Goldeneye. There was so... Oh, Crash Bandicoot, what a game that was. Uh, FIFA 95 had the indoor. I don't think it was that one, though. Not for me, anyway. But there was definitely some indoor ones. Uh, Def Jam, yeah, oh, there was some banging. NBA Street, there you go, John. What a game, KS. NBA Street. Them games there were incredible. San Andreas. Oh, my God. What a game that was. That game there. But anyway, I'm, I'm going way off topic here. But I'm just reminiscing. We were talking about games and uh, Metal Gear Solid as well. That was good. That was good. When I used to play GTA, I had all the cheat codes on paper next to me. I'm like, no, nah, my rating's gone up to five. Up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, R2. Up, you know what I mean, I had to get that rating down quick. Once the helicopter came out, you was finished. Anyway, let me not harp on. I'll be here all day. Uh, Martin Odegaard. Um, is it any coincidence the sunshine comes out um, and all of a sudden Odegaard has come back to life? Them dark winter nights, man, the guy disappeared. But he's back, you know. 
Let the sun shine, let the sun shine, baby. He's back, man. Solar God in full effect. I thought Odor God was brilliant yesterday. Absolutely brilliant. Um, they couldn't get near him. Could not get near him. I'm giving him 9 out of 10. I thought he was superb yesterday. Played the full 90, ran the whole game, and he was brilliant. He was absolutely brilliant. That that's the that's the player we saw last season. That's the player we need consistently. He's been brilliant in the last month or two, definitely. Um, when he plays like that, absolute different class. Superb Odegaard yesterday. Nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. Sorry, captain's performance. Couldn't get near him. Uh, I think somebody just said there, yeah, it, um, created the most chances in Europe, which, you know, says a lot about him. Brilliant performance by the skipper. Let's go into the front three. Uh, we'll start with Martinelli. As he's the only one out of the front three who didn't score, so we'll sort of build up from that point. Uh, Martinelli did well. He did well, I think, overall. If you're Martinelli, you're still looking back on the game and saying, oh, I'm a bit disappointed I didn't get a goal. Didn't get an assist either, but he was dangerous. I'll give him seven and a half. I'd give him... Do I give him an eight? No, I thought he was a bit quiet against Kufal, to be honest. Put a few good crosses in. I'll give him 7.5 for Martinelli. Uh, I'm trying to think. I did watch the game back, but I can't remember him doing that much. He went on a couple good runs. They doubled up on him a bit. I'll give him 7.5. A couple times he could have lifted his head up. Wasn't a bad performance by any means. I just think he could have been a bit more of a goal threat in such a good attacking performance. But nothing to worry about. Um, and I give him... Mm, it's a good point, you know. I gave Havertz a seven. Was Martinelli better than Havertz? No, he wasn't. So I'd move him down to a seven. Yeah, I'm going to move him down to a seven because when you put it like that, he wasn't better than Havertz. So, yeah, no, you're right. I'm giving him a seven. I'm giving him a seven. Um, yeah, he gets a seven. Gets a seven. Havertz's link-up play was decent at times. He had some nice little touches. So, anyway, let's go to the other two. Bakayo Saka. Bakayo Saka running down the wing. Saka. Da, 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 da. You know when I run, you know when you forget the words, you just have to make a noise, don't you? Like da, 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 boo, da, boo. you don't know what the words are, but yeah, that's how we make that Saka song work. Um I think it was last Friday. I had a I had a quite in-depth conversation with the community about Saka. How, yes, there is things that need to be improved on. There are parts of his game. Maybe in 1v1 situations, maybe he needs to get more skillful. Maybe when he's 2v1, he's still got to figure out a way to get past two players. But I tell you something, and I said this in great detail on Friday. You have to respect this guy's output. You have to respect it. His output is outstanding. Last season, he got 14 league goals, 11 assists in 38 games. Bear in mind, he played every single game last season and the season before. Two seasons in a row, he hasn't missed a game, right? He's been in the squad or starting. Last season, got 14 league goals. We've played 20. He's played 23 this season. He's got 10 goals. So I would imagine in the remaining 14 games that are left, he's missed one game for injury. He's going to get more goals than he scored last season. Yet last season, he was performing at a more, you would say he was performing at a better level or a more exciting level. This guy is going to, I mean, last season he got 11 assists. He's on seven. He could get more goals and more assists than he got last season. Yet we're actually saying he doesn't look like he's playing as well as last season. So... Maybe he's not as exciting, but the output is getting even better. And I've got so much respect for him. I actually think he could have scored more yesterday because, you know, he missed a couple of chances. But I'm going to give him 9.5. I'm going to give him 9.5. The only reason it's not a 10 is because I actually think he should have scored another goal in the game. I actually think he should have scored again. I might sound real harsh there, but I'm giving him 9.5. It's still an incredible performance. It's funny because when he missed them chances, I was saying, no, he's moving like Sakaka. Then he scored two goals. And uh, listen, it was magnificent. Remember last season, he missed a penalty at West Ham in a game that really destroyed our title race. 
Um, so to go back there, score the penalty, second goal was fantastic, stepped inside the defender. Um, Daniel said he was disappointed in the interview because he missed elite mentality. That's what I want to read. When I speak to people about, um, about Saka, like uh, people who work at Arsenal and some of the people I speak to, they, they always talk about his mentality. That's all you ever hear them mention. He's so mature. He's so focused. You don't really see Saka in the nightclub. You don't really see him drinking. He's not running wild. He trains hard. You hear Luke Shaw say, listen, Saka is one of the strongest players that he plays against in the Prem. He's, you know, he looks solid, but he's saying he's really tough to play against. This guy is focused on football. And somebody just said there, you know, we're unlocking the Salah in him. We're... A lot of time you watch Salah and you think, oh, he didn't play that well, but he scored two goals. And that's what um, Saka needs to do. And he is doing it. So 9.5, brilliant. And long may it continue. Vince said, Curtis, you really sing when you're on other platforms like AFTV. Listen, I've said it before and I've said it again. Sometimes you walk into your own house. You don't take your trainers off at the front door. You should, but you're doing something quick. You walk into your friend's house, you take your trainers off, you're not going to help yourself to the orange juice in the fridge, you sit down and you wait to be spoken to. AFTV, of course, that's my people, but that ain't my platform, so I ain't going to go on there and start singing next to Robbie, am I? When I'm on my own platform, you know, we can do America's Got Talent or X Factor, I'm going to start singing, I might start rapping, it ain't my fridge, I'm waiting for you to offer me the orange juice. So I'm a little bit more quiet and humble on someone else's platform. On this platform, we do what we want, people. Manners and respect, man. So, yeah, that, that's the reason. You know how it goes. You don't just walk in your friend's house and drink the orange juice and keep your trainers on on the carpet. So, yeah, it is what it is, what it is you know. <laughs> sure got to. Hey, man. But, hey, big up, man. I appreciate your, your input. Um, Carl said Saka is the best uh, is best when close to the goal with the right back overlapping him I agree with that and big up SC Guna thank you very much gifted five Curtis Shaw TV memberships really appreciate it that's 130 new members since kickoff yesterday absolutely goated community uh, you deserve a record deal I'd take one listen you've seen what they can do on computers nowadays they can edit it and make it sound great you know um, I'm ready. Anyone wants to sign me and I, I can do what Usher did, Usher did yesterday at the Super Bowl. You need some good editing software, but um, yeah, it is what it is. Um, let's finish off the starting 11 with Leandro. Bombaras Clark Trossard. I mean, listen. Masterclass. Absolute masterclass of a false nine performance. I watched him yesterday. I said, yo, you're just an absolute baller. That's all he is. The guy is a baller. I love watching this guy play football. I, I absolutely love it. He's so clever. He's so intelligent. He's spraying passes all over the place. He bends it in the top corner. He's doing the goggle celebration. £27 million. Pounds. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I know he's getting on a bit, these grey hairs, but... That was daylight robbery. I always say, you know, I can hand out respect when it's due as well. Edu, you deserve some respect for this one. 27 million for this guy. I don't care if he's 27, 28. Absolute baller. Masterclass, 9.5. Could have scored more. Could have scored more. The header, he puts it over. The volley, great save, Ariola. But he puts in the top corner. So I'm going to give him the same as Saka. 9.5. Could have scored more. I would have given him the 10. He should have scored the header. Saka should have scored the header. They would have got a 10. This is our number nine for the foreseeable. Not writing off Jesus. Still a very good player. Still got a role to play. But this is our number nine for the foreseeable future until we go into the market. What a player. What a bargain. I love the way he plays football. Keep him in this Arsenal team. Keep him in this... Don't take him out. When Jesus comes back, sit down on the bench, bro. This guy is the real deal. 9.5. What a player. Love watching him play. He's a bit of a hybrid. He's like a bit Haleb, a bit Arshavin. You know, he's... Got, I don't know what he is. He's like a... I don't know. But listen, yeah, he's just him. He's Trossard. So 
Baller. Absolute baller. And listen, I don't look at it as a bad thing if Jesus ends up on the bench and, and other players because 20 minutes to go, you need a goal. You can bring on Gabriel Jesus. You can bring on... Um, you know, well, I'm thinking of the players we can bring on. We haven't actually got that many other really good players to bring off the bench, but I wouldn't mind Jesus coming off the bench. So uh, the book of Eli Trossard makes everyone look better. He absolutely sourced yesterday. His passing range and link-up play was incredible. My man of the match, 12 out of 10, Jesus hold bench. Yeah, listen, players, putting good players on the bench is a good thing. Penalty spot said, reminds me of Eduardo. Uh, BX said, Jesus in the left centre mid or winger. Haleb and Santi Cazorla said, Trinidad gunner. Um, yeah, listen, it's good to compare him to those players anyway. Marty said, I thought you were one of the roller skates during Usher's half-time performance. Then they didn't give them the mic. I knew it must not have been you. Hey, man. They got to, if, if I'm there, they got to give me the mic. Let me sing. You was calling him drunky. Listen, I think we can all admit... You know, during that birthday period of Trossard, he was playing like... They, we were calling him Stella R. Trossard. You know, he looked like he'd had 10 pints when he was coming on, you know. But I think he's sobered up now and uh, he's definitely played back to his level. You need a goal, you bring on Jesus. That was funny. I hear you, actually. I actually forgot that bit. But no, I'm still going to put some respect on Jesus' name. But yeah, you know. Maybe, maybe not so much for the goals. Um, let's go to the bench quickly. By the way, I'm going to skip through a lot of them and talk about one. Well, I'm going to talk about two of them. Elneny, Nelson, Cedric, you're just getting five, right? Hardly touch the ball. No problem. Not your fault. You came on late. Nothing to talk about. The guy at the top of this list and the guy at the bottom of the list, I need to have a conversation about. I'm going to start with the guy at the top of the list. Your defense is in trouble when this guy is in the room. I mean, your defense is actually in no trouble. I mean, I look back on the game. I didn't realize this until I watched the game back. Did anyone notice Eddie spent nearly all the time he came on yesterday falling over onto the floor? I don't know what was... I thought he was ice skating. I thought it was Torval and Dean. I thought we was in the Winter Olympics in Calgary. I thought it was cool runnings. I thought Sanka had come on up front. He's tripping over. He's, he's barging into people, fouling them. I'm like, what the hell's he doing? Sherman, Sherman. Oz, what the hell? By the way, big old Oz proposed to his missus yesterday. She said, yes, that's what we're about, community business. But what the hell was Eddie doing yesterday? Doing roly polies and that. I couldn't believe what this guy was doing. Um... But yeah, Eddie, man, you was, oh God. You, you'd have thought Eddie was the 16-year-old making his debut and Juan Eri was the 24-year-old who'd played for England. Eddie gets a four, man. Eddie gets a four. He gets two for putting his boots on the right feet. I'll give him two more for putting his kit on. Apart from that, I saw roly polies forward rolls. I, I didn't know what was going on. I genuinely thought Sanka and Yul Brenner had come on up front. I thought Cool Runnings was... Was was back. Eddie gets a four, man. Try and stay on your feet, bro. Then we can move from that point. You know, that's that's the, that's the point we build from. Um, maybe he's drunk. Maybe it's his birthday. Damn. Um, yeah, your groundsman is in trouble if Eddie's in the room, mashing up the surface. I want to give a big shout out. Hey, Ian, there was a bobble on the pitch when I tripped up. I refuse to believe it. Um, Ethan Waneri, 16 years of age. Now, listen, didn't rip down the whole game, didn't score, nothing like that. But as I said yesterday, people, what was you doing at the age of 16? This guy is playing in the Premier League at 16 years of age. 16 in the Prem. Did you see the composure on the ball? I'm not saying he pulled up trees, but just calm. Dribble past you, keep the ball, played it forward, into feet. Crazy. Absolute. Listen, I'm giving Wanieri... 10 out, no, I'm giving him 9 out of 10. I'm giving him 9. The reason I'm not giving him 10, yo, you didn't max out, you didn't score. There's still room to improve. But I'm giving him 9 out of 10 because you're 16 years of age, bro. Just calmly dribbling past people. Calvin Phillips couldn't even keep up with him. 
It's crazy. John said at 16, I was crying in my bedroom because I'd just been to Arsenal. It's crazy. I'm, get, I'm giving him nine. I've got a lot of time for him. I think he's a real talent, by the way. I think we should really try and give him game time as and when we can. You can just see a player when they've got something about them and when they're calm on the ball, man. And I, I just think this one here is a real, real talent. So I'm giving him nine, man. Uh, oh, just been released by Arsenal, says John. Man, it's crazy. That is crazy. Yeah, one here he gets a nine for me. Uh, big up Snake Eyes, who's gifted a Curtis Shaw TV membership. Really appreciate that, bro. Book of Eli said, one here he needs more game time. Calm and collected seven. Rigo said, Pyramid Pirlo and Yorkshire Pirlo on the same pitch yesterday. I've seen it all. Uh, Troy said, do me a favor, send healing thoughts to my son, Gabriel. He's in surgery right now. Hey, prayers go out to him, man. I wish Chelsea would buy uh, Mudrick so we could get him. So in truth, I'm partially responsible for the signing. Hey, man, Chelsea done us a favor, bro. That was, that was like signing a Ferrari out of the auto trader. And then realizing, you know, the engine's dodgy and it's been in a car crash. It's a Cat D. You know, Mudrick was not what he appeared to be. I was always concerned about Mudrick because I said, listen, this guy's balling out, yeah, but this, it, he's not even playing in stadiums. Like, he's, there's a car park behind him and a running track. I could probably go on that pitch and do something. So, 88 million for a guy playing in a supermarket car park was always a concern for me. I can't lie. But, yeah, Troy, big up for your message, bro. Obviously, thoughts go out to, to, um, to your boy. So, yeah, man, hopefully... Um, a safe recovery. Um, let's move on, people. Obviously, a fantastic victory. And let me finish again. Because they say, you never give the manager no credit. I gave him huge credit last week. And guess what? Same again. Mikel Arteta gets a 10 out of 10. Yeah, I said it. I said it, people. Because I was there when I said it. This guy. No, this guy. Mikel Arteta. Masterclass. I've always rated him. I'll say it today because if we fall out of the title race, I'll possibly, you know, I may be saying something different. If we win the title, it will be the My Manager tweet in capital letters on Twitter, and I'm, I'm convinced they won't be able to handle that, but we'll do it regardless. 10 out of 10, once again, masterclass. What a performance. You could argue that's the best performance we've ever seen since he's been the manager. Um, you know... I suppose it depends on the context you're looking at. Maybe winning the FA Cup final or beating Man City in the semi-final, beating Man City in the league. I don't know. Maybe you, you, you put it to the importance of the game, but 6-0, I think that's the best performance I've seen um, since uh, since he's been the manager. Yeah, Buenos Aires, man. I don't know where he is. He hasn't been in the comments for ages. Hopefully he's all right. Uh, no big screen for Mikel. No, I had to have Mikel and Declan Rice. I felt this one, obviously, was uh, was ideal. We needed that Dubai trip. Who would have known all our manager needed was, uh, was a gold stake? You know, gold stake was going to fix all of our problems. So, uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, long may it continue. If it goes wrong again, get him back over there. couple of things I want to look at. couple of things I want to look at. And it's interesting how this turnaround has sort of come about. And uh, the form that we're in at the moment is crazy. I was just looking at some of the stats, people, and uh, I wanted to bring this up. In Arsenal's last four games, just to put this into context, we this was after the winter break, after Dubai, by the way. Before Dubai... We lost 2-0 to Liverpool in the FA Cup, 2-1 to Fulham and 2-0 to West Ham. In a row, by the way. We come back from Dubai, gold stake and a suntan. 5-0 against Crystal Palace, 2-1 against Forest, 3-1 against Liverpool and 6-0 against West Ham. That is 13, 16 goals in our last four games. 16 goals and we've only conceded two. In the last four games, we've scored 16, conceded two. We've Burnley away on Saturday, which, listen, I don't want to count my chickens too early, but I'm expecting us to clip them guys up as well. I'm, I'm looking at least four goals again. Shout out Salt Bay, man. 10 out of 10 for the gold stake. Let's put him in the player rating, Salt Bay. 10 out of 10. I don't know what you put in that stake, but these guys are going crazy. 
Um, that, this, that gold, man, it's working wonders. Um, but yeah, Premier League this season, first 20 games, we scored 20 goals. We were seventh, 168 shots. We were eighth. I'm not going to go through everything. But what I'm saying is in the last 12 games compared to the first 12, we scored 27 goals instead of 20. So we scored seven more goals. And we've taken a lot more shots, 231 shots, second highest in the league, where it was 168 shots that was eighth in the league. Very simple things. But what do we always say? You don't shoot, you don't score. The more you shoot, the more goals you're going to score. Arsenal, we're always going crazy. Why the hell do they not shoot from outside the box? Look at Declan Rice's goal yesterday, outside the box. Trossard's goal. Not actually sure whether Trossard's was outside the box, but certainly the edge of the box. We're now taking shots from outside the area, and we're now getting some joy from it, which shows shoot more, be more positive going forward. And as I keep saying, the encouraging thing for Arsenal, we've got seven players out at the moment. Seven players out of the team. No Zinchenko, no Tomiyasu, no Thomas Partey, no Fabio Vieira, no Emil Smith-Rowe, and no Gabriel Jesus. You know, these are key players. Timber as well, obviously, is long-term. You get three, four of those guys back even if they're on the bench, because yesterday we didn't have good squad depth. You look at the bench, it looked weak. If you can get four of those back, three, four of those, you get part A back, you get Jesus back, get Smith Rowe back, get Tommy Asu back, maybe Timber towards the end of the season. Zinchenko, you know, it's, it's a different team. It's a different squad. You can change the game as well. So listen, it's, uh, it's positive. Everything's positive at the moment. And we have to continue to keep building. That is the key thing for Arsenal. Keep building and see where it gets us. Um, right, let's go into waffle settings. I'll keep it brief. It's Monday morning. Want to make sure you're all well fed. Um, with the man himself, Mickey Rose, the boss. K -k 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 man music. Some people message me before. They say, yo, it's disrespectful to call him the cone man. But I say, yo, you know I do call him Mickey Ross, the boss. Rose, that's my nickname. So there's a massive compliment in there as well. Do you know what I mean? So we have to embrace it. Come my music to the top of the world and back, people. Um, let's hear what he had to say after the 6 0 win. Um, he said, uh, what he said to the players before the game, he said, it's time to beat West Ham. Uh, we all knew it. We had it in our tummies and we knew that it was going to be a really tough match. We have to do certain things better, especially. Um, in both boxes than the previous matches. We certainly did that today. Definitely no arguments with that. And what the victory shows uh, about our character with the number of players we had missing. He said, absolutely, I'm not surprised. The way we train every day, it's true we are missing big players and big starters at the end. The players need possibilities and chances to judge them. Certainly today we can judge them. And what the boss can say about the Saka, about Saka's performance... He said uh, that at his age, in the position, the consistency, normally they don't go in. He's proving everybody wrong, showing he can do it. Um, what he has done today as well, I had doubts that he was going to take the penalty or not because of what happened last season. It shows as well how mature he is and how determined he is to go to the next level. I've said before, and I said earlier in this show, when Saka missed that penalty for England, that can break players. Genuinely, that is a disaster in football terms. You miss the penalty that knocked England out, or one of the three penalties. He comes back to Arsenal, the first penalty we got, he took it and he scored it. Tells you a lot about the character of him and his personality. Misses the penalty at West Ham last season. Would have been easy for him, and no one would have disrespected him if he just said, Odegaard, you take it, and I don't feel good about taking it. Man said, give me the ball, bro. I'll score. Don't worry. I'm not. It's just a mistake. I'll put it right. The guy's mentality is exceptional. It really is. What a player. 22 years of age. He's top quality. On the ruthlessness show today, he said that we want to learn. We want to be better every single week. We are not satisfied. After a Liverpool game, we have to show now the capacity to replicate or be better. And that's the way the boys trained all week. On Declan Rice's display coming back to West Ham and his set-piece prowess, I have to say, that set-piece coach as well is nailing it because I actually 
was saying a couple of weeks ago, why is Declan Rice taking corners? He's quite tall. You would think he would be in the penalty era. Well, we're now scoring from his corners and free kicks, and I'm calling him Beckham Rice. So, yeah, um, fair play. He said, I'm really happy with him. It was very emotional and a special day for him. He loves West Ham so much. Today, I had to focus on the task and what he had to deliver. Set pieces were one of those. When you have certain players on the field who can threaten from outside the box and inside, I was really pleased to see the class of the crowd as well to give him the reception. I think he deserves. I mean, to be honest, he was getting booed a lot, but I, I can honestly say when he came off the pitch at the end, they did give him a very good reception and he totally deserved that. So, um, yeah, I, I, think, uh, I think he deserved that. He definitely deserved that, so big him up. Um, let's just skip through this. Uh, I'm being able to silence the home crowd. He said, we try, but the opponent plays as well. We certainly want to do that as much as possible. Um, on the way Havertz and Trossard integrated into today's game, it's something very different. The way I had the game in my head and the spaces and the behaviours, how we could hurt them most with Leo and Kai in those positions. Then we saw the executions. Credit to them, they did really well. I love how they sneaked Havertz's name next to Trossard's. Um, you know, Trossard ripped that game apart. Uh, Havertz was okay, shall we say. Um, but listen, it, there were some positive signs in his performance yesterday. So big up Matt Sovanguna. Go and subscribe to his channel. He said, top performance by the team and the manager on yesterday. One game at a time and keep on being consistent. Uh, Elliot said, Nyami Waffles, sipping syrup, sent West Ham supporters to Stratford shops looking for rice shoe drops with that coma, c -c 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 coma music. Listen, I think I speak on behalf of all Arsenal fans. Whether, whether you're the biggest um, critic of Arteta or you're the biggest you know, fan of Arteta, we all want the same thing. We, we're all willing to admit, okay, he's proved us wrong. We want to be proven wrong. You know, we don't want Havertz to play bad. We want him to play well. So, listen, I hope, I hope he proves us all wrong. I hope he can get us that title or that Champions League. Somebody said in the comments earlier, what would you rather win, the Prem or the Champions League? I actually think winning the Premier League is a bigger indication that you are the best team. Because sometimes, you know, you get a good run and, and you can win the Champions League without being the best. So part of me would love to win the Prem to prove we're number one. But I've always said I need the star above the badge. I need the star above the badge. I need us to win that Champions League. You know, we cannot exist without winning that Champions League while other clubs are running around with it. We've been, we're, we're bigger than them. So... You offer me them to, you give me that Champions League final at Wembley. Uh, Jay Dime, Kurt, when you met 50, you should have got a C unit dub. I know, man. There was security there. They were on people's case. Don't speak to him for too long. I was like, they were like, you know, just take the picture. I was like, yo, listen, before we take the picture, I have to just say something quickly, you know. So I had a little chat with him, and despite his security, he had some meathead security guard standing about six yards away who was like trying to get you to move on quick. Um, yeah, show with Turkish tonight, by the way, um, on his channel. We'll be live at six o'clock. So tune in for that. We was going to do a bit later, but obviously Chelsea are playing Crystal Palace. So we're going to go live at six. Tune in for that one. Uh, be a good conversation. Good vibes as always with Turkish. Um, six o'clock over on his channel. Make sure you tune in for that. Uh, let me skip through this waffle. On if the boss agrees with Saka's comments that we're smelling blood in the title race, said so that's up to him. What I want as a team is for us to be better. I won't read all that. And if it was a statement victory, he said obviously we are maintaining and building momentum. The performances have been strong. On if the players feel like they're pushing the standards higher every week, um, he says yes because we know the standards and the level that we are facing. Um, on Rice's set-piece ability, one of the reasons we signed him, he said it was something that we knew and we could imagine. It depends as well who is in the box. On if the boss thought about keeping Saka on the pitch to get a hat-trick, he said, no, I thought it was the time to take him off. We played so many minutes. Why Tommy Asu wasn't in the squad? He said he had a niggle when he came back from the national team. It was not the moment to risk him. Fair enough. Um, 
we was all sort of wondering in the comments yesterday, why is Tommy Asu not on the bench? Uh, on one year, his involvement, he said, there is something you have to do in your team that is trust the teammates. I had two things. One, the players on the bench whispering to bring Ethan on, which is great to hear. And the other one, your teammates want to give you the ball. If they do that, it's because they really trust you. And you can only have to see how many times he was involved. It was a great sign. I'm telling you, that tells you everything. That tells you everything. The players on the bench are actually saying, get one area on the pitch. So there you go. There you go. He listens. He listens. Fair play. Give one area runouts, man. He's a proper player. Um, anyway, let's move on from that. What else have I got here? What, what have I got lurking? In fact, Ian Beale settings, people. I've got nothing left. Oh, Premier League table. Premier League table. Let's have a look at the Premier League table before we get out of it. Uh, Mr. Cool Bus Driver nailed it with his comment earlier on, he said, brilliant victory, but we're still third in the league. And I said, you know what? I haven't once looked at it like that, but you're right. You're right. And that does put things into context. I'm delighted. I'm in a great mood, but we're still not where we need to be. Sometimes it's easier chasing than being chased. And I wonder if Arsenal are actually more comfortable trying to catch Liverpool and Man City than being chased by Man City. Goal difference yesterday was tremendous. We got level with Man City. We were six goals behind them. We're one goal behind Liverpool. So not only was it the three points, it was the goal difference. As you can see from the form table, now four wins in a row. Burnley this weekend. Liverpool play Brentford away. Not saying Liverpool will drop points there, but I'm saying it's a, a, a hard game to manoeuvre. Ivan Tony and co. You saw Man City had to fight to win. Man City play Chelsea at home. Now, Chelsea are not in good form. They're on page two. But you would hope Chelsea might be able to do something against Man City. We obviously go to Burnley. So, listen, I said it before. I think Arsenal need to win 12 games to win the title. We've got 14 games left. I think you've got to win 12. That is how fine the margins are. I think you could probably lose one and draw one and still win the league. I don't think you'll get much more out of that. That would be five draws, five losses and 28 victories. I think that would win us the title. Anything less than that, I think we're going to struggle. I saw the stats. Manchester City have actually won 12, no, sorry, 10 games in a row in all competitions. So they're kicking into gear now. You know, you saw Haaland the other day, dash that brave weight to the floor, slotted it in the bottom corner. The robot is well and truly back. You know, Haaland's back in, in, in form as well now. So they're the fine margins. You know, I think we've got to go to Man City and beat them and show that we can beat them. So listen, fine margins, long way to go. Take it one game at a time and hopefully we can get there. But, you know, it's... It, Maybe the fact that the, the pressure's not as high on us, maybe they'll deal with that a little bit better. And if we can keep Saliba, Gabriel, Rice, Trossard, Martinelli, Saka, Odegaard, that sort of core of the team, keep them fit until the end of the season. Because I honestly believe that Saliba injury killed us last season. And we didn't have the strength in depth, you know, with the Kivior signing wasn't enough to sort of um, hold it down. As I've, as I've said... We've got a very difficult running. You know, we've got to go to Man City. We've got to go to Tottenham. We've got to go to Man United. We've got to go to Brighton. So uh, we play a lot of the top 10 teams away from home. Uh, a lot of you said this, and it's great, isn't it, Bo? Uh, we actually play Man United at Old Trafford, second to last game of the season. Can you imagine winning the title at Old Trafford as we did all those years ago? Will Todd would be incredible. And obviously the Champions League games against Porto as well. So it's exciting as a fan, as a content creator. This is where we want to be. So I am going to credit Arteta and the team. Be in contention. Be in the race. Give us an opportunity to win trophies. We just want to get over the finish line. We want to win one of them um, and, you know, have that magic at the end of the season. So listen... People, thank you very much for tuning in. Absolutely brilliant show. Really enjoyed it. Much better than Arsenal therapy. You know, I'd rather be, you know, good vibes and singing and shameless green screens and things like that. So big up to everyone locked in. Uh, make sure you hit the like button on the video. Um, make sure you tune in 6 p.m. 
Uh, I'll be live with Turkish over on his channel. Should be good vibes over there. I'll be back here at 2 p.m. tomorrow. And uh, obviously, throughout the week, we'll build up to the Burnley game on the weekend. So take care. Enjoy your Monday. And I'll see you all soon, people. Bless. <laughs>